Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to classify a truss with respect to both statical and kinematic determinacy. We have been given specifically this truss, being asked to find the statical indeterminacy and the degree of kinematic indeterminacy. For statical indeterminacy, we are simply trying to identify the number of unknowns and compare it to the number of equations of equilibrium which we have available to us. I'm going to start out by sketching the unknown reactions that we have because we do know that those are unknown forces and I will write that up here so the number of reactions we have would be four. In addition to that we have an unknown bar force for every member in this truss so we would have to count them up and we would come up with a total of 13 bar forces. This tells me that the total number of unknown forces that we have in this truss will be 17. We need to be able to compare that with the number of equilibrium equations which we have. And what we know is that the number of equilibrium equations is associated with the number of joints. So if I count up the total number of joints I have, I find that I have seven of those. And that means then that the total number of equilibrium equations I have, seven joints, multiplied by two equilibrium equations per joint, that's summation of forces in the x and summation of forces in the y, and that will give me a total of 14 equilibrium equations. Thus, 17 minus 14 will then tell me that I am statically indeterminate to the third degree. So the notion of statical indeterminacy is associated with forces, unknown forces. Moving on to kinematic indeterminacy, the idea here is we are trying to look for how many unknown displacements do we have. This is very straightforward in that we are simply trying to identify for each joint how many unknown displacements do we have. So I'm just simply going to start labeling these here and indicating that we have two unknown displacements per joint and that would be in a typical sense. So I've got those two there. Now, if I look where the roller is, I have an unknown displacement in that direction, but not in the vertical direction because the roller, I know, doesn't allow vertical motion. Here, I have an unknown displacement in that direction, but not in the horizontal. And here, I have no unknown displacements. I know what those are already. So the notion of kinematic indeterminacy is nothing more than counting up those number of unknown displacements. And that will be 10 unknown displacements, so I'm kinematically indeterminate to the 10th degree. That concludes this example. Remember that it is always a beautiful day for studying structures.